grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for today is the Gospel just read from St. Luke chapter 3. Be seated. Somehow when I think of this time of year, it always reminds me of our sluggishness as a people. We pray, stir up our hearts, O God, in our collect this morning. How many times during this season do we hear, wake up or pay attention? You better watch out and the light. Truth be told, we are weighed down this time of year. This season for so many can easily become a burden. So what is it that we are burdened with, you may ask? We are burdened with stuff. Now, I don't only mean earthly possessions, these things that we cling to so much. That is really just the beginning of the stuff that weighs us down. John says, bear fruits in keeping with repentance. In other words, let the actions of your life, the words and deeds that make up every day, let the actions of your life reflect what is in your heart. Now, I don't know about you, but I, for one, really don't like it when people start talking about the relationship between my heart and my wallet, or the relationship between my heart and my mouth. I would like to live in this fantasy land where what I believe and what I do have nothing to do with each other. That would be nice, wouldn't it? But that is not reality, that price. The reality is that your heart, your soul, your mind, your body, it's all interconnected. There is only one you. So if what you do is not in keeping with who you are, eventually what you do will change who you are. I'm speaking with John the Baptist here of what we call <clears throat> repentance. Repentance means to turn or to be turned away from one life and to another. It means turning your back on this empty way of life that the world's sirens would call us to every day. This is why we get that little interchange in our text. The crowds ask him, what shall we do? And he answers, whoever has two tunics is to share with him who has none, and whoever has food is to do likewise. Tax collectors also come to be baptized and said to him, teacher, what shall we do? And he said, said collect no more than you are authorized to do. Soldiers also asked him, and we, what shall we do? And he said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or by false accusation, and be content with your wages. <coughs> it would be easy, even tempting, at least for us, for John to say something like this. Well, Jesus is the reason for the season here. Keep Jesus in your heart and get everything else will work out just fine. That kind of John the Baptist, as attractive as it may be, wouldn't wear camel's hair. That John the Baptist wouldn't lose his head for speaking the truth to King Herod about his adulterous life. No, our John the Baptist, the John of the Bible, speaks and gets to the heart of the matter. What bogged these people down then and now is simply their stuff, their food, their clothing, their money, their love of money. That is what weighed them down. So the question is, how do the things of this life weigh you down? Are you so defined by your things that you don't have time to hear the word of God? And remember, those things may not mean physical stuff. It can mean your time, your activities, 
the myriad things your kids do or you make them do. There are so many ways that you and I can get weighed down with the cares of this life, it is hard to even know how to begin. The same was true for them as it is for us. Setting aside even a few minutes a day to pray can become an impossible task even if we want to do it in the first place. Yet the things of this life, they can weigh you down, press you down. Even if in and of themselves they aren't bad, they may even be good. If you put all of this stuff together, it can get to the point where you are so worried and full of care and anxiety that it's impossible to even lift up your eyes. That's why Jesus says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You see, beloved, this is what Jesus offers you, which is what we so desperately, desperately need. He offers you rest. The things we cling to seem so important at the time. They seem so central to our identity. Yet when the things of this time, of this day, pass and fade away, the longing remains. It is that longing, that desire for something more, that is what Jesus seeks to fill. So repent. Empty yourself of all your stuff. Lay it at the cross of Jesus. Your doubts, your fears, your greed, your possessions, whatever it is that lays you down, that causes you such care and worry and anxiety, lay it down at the cross, where Jesus comes to give you something far, far greater than those things which are here today and broken and gone tomorrow. He gives you eternal rest. He comes to put your soul at peace in the forgiveness of sins. It is when you are emptied of all of this stuff that God's proper work really begins in you. When all of these things are swept away in the refiner's fire, it is then God enters in to give you the peace which only he himself can give. Remember those words from our epistle. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion in the day of Jesus Christ. Sometimes being in the refiner's fire is, well, it's painful. Purifying hurts sometimes. The fuller's soap may great, but the cleansing which only God can bring about is worth it. Don't be afraid of God's mercy. These things today which seem oh so important will pass away. And in their place, God puts a little babe, Christ Jesus our Lord. That is a gift which endures. That is a life which can never end. Another way of putting this would be to say that in order for the good stuff to get in, the bad stuff has to get out. God does this purging by teaching you and I to let go of the things we cling to so much. But like Lot's wife, we are tempted to turn our backs. We are tempted to want to have one more peek at Sodom. We want to have that look. Salt, after all, can be pretty appealing. Sodom, I'm sure, had a good side somewhere. But it was all a lie. Only the real thing from our Lord will suffice. So today, come and be cleansed of your sins. Lift up your hearts to the Lord, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He comes to you today humble and lowly, riding under bread and wine. He comes to wash you, to purify you, to make you clean in the blood of the Lamb. Come to the table of the Lord. Be free of all of these things which weigh you down so much. Jesus has come, and what he comes to bring is far greater than anything the world can offer. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts.
hearts, O Lord, to make ready the way of your only begotten Son, that by his coming we may be enabled to serve you with pure minds. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in true faith to life everlasting.